Hi everyone, my name is Jessica Jensen and I am the owner of Jewelry by Jessica Design. I am here doing my very first instructional video, so wish me luck. Um, today I'm going to be showing you how to make a beaded quill feather. This is one I've already finished earlier and prior. What supplies you will need are two quills. I already have pre-cut mine, but for the length using size 110 seed beads, I use mainly Toho's. Um, you'll want to cut your quill, as shown here, um, to an inch and a quarter. Well, just a little shy of a quarter. I believe that is three-eighths. But once you do that, you will then need two strands of whatever size thread you'd like to use. Myself, I like to use size B, uh, Nyama thread. Uh, two yards, one yard per each, just so that way it's simple and you have enough thread for all cases. Um, deciding on preference and needle is up to you. You will definitely need a long needle. Um, this one is a size 13. I prefer working with the shorts for the main working of this, so I have a size 12 short needle. So, once you have your quill cut, you will then thread your needle, as always, and you'll want to use the long one to start with. You know, if you're going to be switching to the shorter needle, then just put on enough to get it on your needle. You will then slide your needle through the very center of the quill. But watch as your needle goes through because you want to make sure it doesn't try to go through one of the sides which then will end up ruining your quill and you will have to choose another quill. Once you get your needle pushed through if you have the ability to grip it, that's wonderful, and pull the needle through. Otherwise, use some needle nose pliers and gently pull your needle and thread through. You're going to pull your thread, leaving approximately, I believe, I'd say four to five inches of a tail for pulling through on the end. Once you get, darn pliers, sorry. <laughs> Once you get your needle pulled all the way through, you're going then to pick up your bottom bead. In the case of my feathers, I use black at the very bottom, gray before that, silver line crystal, and then my color. So you will pick up one of your bottom beads, which in this case is a black just a single bead. You're going to go back through the center of your quill, just as you had come down. Push the needle all the way through and pull your thread all the way back through until you have your first bead at the very bottom of the quill. If you want to stay using a long needle, you can. That is your choice. Like I said, my preference is using the shorter needles because it's much more simple, in my opinion. So thread your, tw your other needle. Okay, once you have your needle rethreaded, you're then going to go at a diagonal slant and put your needle approximately where you feel your top bead would sit. It's most of the this is an approximation. There's no set actual guidelines, so you have to do more of a guessing game. So, you go at a slant, pull your needle and thread all the way through, sometimes your tassel tail will get tangled. Just pull it out. Simple as that. 
once you have your thread coming out of the side of the quill like you see here you will pick up your first colored bead just one single bead go through that hole you just came um, out of and straight across coming out the other side of the quill pull your thread make sure you are being very gentle as you pull quills are very fragile as many know that work with them you'll then pick up one more colored bead go back through that hole into the other bead being gentle as always because you will be passing through these holes several times once you have your first two beads laid out your next task is to pick up two more colored beads one and two you will then judge where the center of your bead will sit be so that it sits right next to the first bead like I said it's a judgment game it'll take you some time but once you get the hang of it you can pretty well eyeball it so that way your beads will sit right next to each other then pick up two more beads but this time instead of going right back through that hole you're gonna go to the row above the very first row we did and go through that bead on the side that you just pulled your thread through and go back through that first two beads pull your needle through gently move your two new beads into their row space gently pull on the thread always be gentle then you're going to put your needle into your second row and going back through that hole straight across make sure you push your second bead so you have two beads on each side of the quill there is your first two rows for me I am using doing one two three four five six seven solid rows of colored beads so once again pick up two colored beads find your guesstimated spot of where you would set your beads gently push your needle through the quill gently pull the thread flip over grab two more colored beads and as before go, you're going to on this side always go back through the row above that you had just done before make sure to always go through the same hole if at all possible Ow. once you push through pull your thread and needle <coughs> drop your beads down into where their row will be and run your needle back through that row and through the quill as well you're always going through the center of the quill so again pick up two beads guesstimate where your row will be push your needle through pull add two beads go through the row just above you're always going to be backtracking and you will keep doing this until you get to your part where you will start changing out colors I'm going to pause this and restart it when I get to my I believe it was seventh row here where I do the color change alrighty as you can now see I have my seven rows of color so now I will be doing the transitioning color rows so to do this you're going to pick up your color bead and then what will be your next row 
bead, which for me, like I said, is a silver line crystal. Do the same as before, as with all the past rows, guesstimate where your needle needs to go for your bead. Other side, you're going to go opposite pickup, color the, uh, the silver line next, and then your color. Go back through the previous row, pull through, line your beads up, and push through. This is just the pattern I use. You can always change it up, but this is how I've learned to do it. On this one here that I've already done, I have only one solid row of the silver line crystal. So, pick up my two silver line crystals, go through the quill, pick up two more silver line crystals through the previous row. I'm hoping this is coming through well, as I explained in the beginning, first time ever doing an instructional video, but I've been asked numerous times how I get mine quill feathers to look so nice and neat. It took a lot of trial and error, to say the least. So, I am hoping this video will help those in need of assistance. Now that I've got that row on, I will grab my previous row, which was the silver line. Next is my gunmetal. I love the gunmetal just because it is a gray-like black, and it just blends so nicely in. And then on the opposite side, you pick up your new and then the old. Go through the previous row. Then back through your row, which is the new row. Pull thread through. On this one, I have two rows of the gunmetal. So I will do two rows of the gunmetal. You're always going back through the previous one and then through the one you just did. Always using the exact same hole so that way it's more stabilized. There's one row. And you always want to try to get it so that way your beads are as close as possible to each other so that way they form stability back through the past row now we do our past color which is the gunmetal now I have the matte black and that goes in Matte black, then gunmetal. Back through the previous row. Always search for your hole. Makes it a lot easier, especially later on. Which you will shortly find out. Now we want to get in two rows of the black, which is my bottom. Well, two rows of two, that is, because there is also the final single bead rows. So, as always, make sure you're passing through the previous row you did, then going back through the new row. We're almost done here, so... <laughs> I'm hoping you're able to see what I'm doing. I'm trying to do this as best I can. I'm not used to having an audience, to say the least. <laughs> Missed a bead, so pull back. There we go. Now, since we're to this point, you want to add on only one. But as you can see, there's very little tip here, so... We're going to have to angle this just right, to say the least. 
try to get as close to the previous bead without splitting the quill tip. Be as gentle as possible. Sometimes you'll have more space, sometimes you won't. Once again, just put on one single bead since this is our last row. Go through the previous row, pull your needle on, set up your bead. Now, push your needle back through your little hole, pick up your very last two beads here. Now you are going to go through the first bead you put on, which is the one at the tip. You're going to go through that, then back down through the single row. Easiest way sometimes is put your needle through, then go through the bead for that one, if it does happen in this manner. Once you do that, go back now you will be going back through every single row you have added on. Always trying to make sure you go through the hole you went through the previous times. Just keep backtracking all the way till you get to the tip. Okay, as you can see, I paused it so that way I could get through all of them. I am at the row before the final first row we put on. You're going to move your needle just through the bead and not go through the quill. You're going to pull your thread up. You're going to then, at a diagonal angle, try to go through the original angled hole you first went through on the side of the quill. So that way you come up through the very center of the quill. Very gently pull your thread through. From here you can either add more beads up this way and so forth. It's up to you how you want to attach this. The way I did it with my first one, as I showed you here, is I take, while this strand is still on this needle, I take and add six of my silver line crystal beads just because I think they're pretty. This is one of my favorite beads to use. I remove the threading from that short needle. I then thread my long needle because you are going to be, well actually before you put um, those beads all the way on, you do want to actually not your thread with a double knot or a surgeon's knot. I'm not quite sure the exact terminology but basically it's like a normal knot but you pass through it twice and then you pull it. That secures your thread there so then you can put on your beads that you'll be using and then you thread your needle unless you're still using your uh, longer needle. You then go through those six beads if you're following this pattern that I'm doing here. Pull that needle all the way through. And here you are going to pull the beads together to form a loop as tight as possible. Once you do that, you then take and double knot your thread on one side, if it will cooperate. <laughs> Pull it tight. Then just for added measure, I always flip it over when I'm doing this type of setup. And I do the same double knot 
on the opposite side. It's trying to belly stinker. <laughs> Pull your knots firm, being careful still with the quill. Once you have your knots in place, add your second piece of thread to your needle, your long needle. Make sure you have your long needle on at this point. Most needles for the long ones do have enough space to fit two strands of thread. Pull to where you have your thread even. Then, with great care, you're going to take and push your needle back down through your quill center. Very, very slowly. Still making sure that you are not going to gum through either side. Once you come out the other end, pliers are usually the best for this because you can go very slow and you have a sure grip. Just very, very gently pull those strands all the way out of the quill feather you have created. Pull out your strands. You can take them off the needle. And then the best option, if you don't have it, best option I will recommend is having a thread zapper. It gets a clean, clean cut, and it's very precise. You can use scissors, but you have a chance of snipping stuff. So, if you hold your quill like this, it's giving it support. Get your thread zapper ready. All heated up, just careful you don't burn your finger, by the way. And very gently, get as close, but not too close, and snip off your excess thread, which is, of course, trash. Now, what you do is you take your earring hook, or whatever means you will be attaching to. I am just doing simple hooks. You take where you did your six bead loop and you set it right down the center on the loop part of your earring hook. The ball sometimes likes to try and get into the area. But then just simply clasp and close. Reset that and there you have it. finished quill feathers. Thank you very much. This was Jessica Jensen with Jewelry by Jessica. You can find me on Facebook. Um, at the link I will provide below. Or at Facebook.com backslash Jessica dot Jensen dot one nine eight two. Thank you very much and I hope you enjoyed the tutorial.